what's good everybody welcome to this video today i'm going to be doing a live force plate analysis of one of my athletes something that nobody in this industry does nobody has ever done this before and i'm just gonna do it and drop some fucking gems live on you guys so be ready stay to stay for the whole video because you don't want to miss this if you are serious about your coaching and your coaching i especially then stick around because this is value straight up in your face let's go so we are today analyzing my guy vladimir okay so he used to be a pro skier from bulgaria and i have known him for 1.5 years now and we've been training with each other online for one and a half years and now he pulled up to me in Vienna and we did a force plate assessment to see how far we have come in these one and a half years and do some biomechanical work and shit. So his story is he had an ACL surgery uh, injury and then he had no surgery, got surgery two years after that injury. And then he was fucked basically for five years or so. And he was depressed as hell. He couldn't do anything because he was doing like he was just getting this classic physio bullshit, Bosu ball, electro my electro stimulation bullshit, like no real training. He was fucked. He was depressed. He couldn't do his sport. He's 27 years old now. Uh, three months after starting to work with me, his life was back to normal. And here's his story. So I had an ACL surgery and a partial meniscus removal about five years ago. I had a hard time recovering from this injury uh, as I, I kept experiencing knee pain from basic uh, stuff like body weight exercises, body weight squats, or just simply going down the stairs. So I've changed maybe 50 physios throughout my life. Uh, essentially, they were doing the exact same thing, laser treatments, electrical posing devices, bullshit bosso ball balance exercises or some, some bands, etc. Uh, had absolutely no clue of uh, body mechanics whatsoever. So nothing kind of worked out for me. And I was under se severe depression, couldn't practice my sport. Uh, and that's when uh, a friend of mine actually introduced me to Dario, Dario Saison. I've been working with Dario for almost two years now. And I can proudly say that I'm, the, I'm in the best shape of my life. I can uh, practice my skiing. I also practice other sports now. Uh, I can squat, I can move without pain. I'm pain free and I feel amazing. Darius has helped me to gain a lot of understanding on how the human body should actually operate and what's good for me and what's not. Um, and yeah, I am extremely happy to be back on my skis and to be doing sports and being active after four or five years of uh, not being able to do that. And now he pulled up and we are going to look at his counter movement jump today. Okay, I'm not going to look at the other tests that would take way too long, but I'm going to talk about the counter movement jump today. So let's start with this. So first off, I will look at what is he doing um, strategy wise. Okay, so in his counter movement strategy, so Vladimir is the blue guy and red is the average population, okay? But when I say average, bigger than average, lower than average, I always mean in this video the comparison to my testing population, okay? So this is like 35 athletes or so, and most of them are professional athletes who make money playing their sport and are quite some level there's only a couple amateurs in there so mostly first league players of basketball soccer um, volleyball um, got some i think a uh, boxer or some shit yeah mostly team sports and high level okay so vladi jumps a little bit higher than the average okay um but what stands out the most is his stiffness values okay in the kind of movement jump so the more negative this number is the more stiff someone is moving stiffness is a measure of how little range do you use to perform your jump okay so vladi if we look at him this is his range okay this is not deep okay this is like regular 
I would say this is regular, maybe just a tiny bit to the more stiff side, okay? Um, definitely not a guy who uses a lot of range, okay? Also, he is not a hinging type person, okay? So, how can I tell this? Well, because the rate of bending in his knees and his hips is about the same, okay? So, there's people who will purely hinge down, and then there's people who will bend their knees a lot. There's people in between, and Vladi is kind of in between, um... But definitely not a hinger. That's what I would say. Okay. So I'm not making crazy statements here. I'm just saying he's not a hinger. That's all I'm saying here. Okay. Not a pure hinger. There's a lot of quad here. And this is like one of the more kind of more upright counter movement jumps that I've seen. Okay. So his upper body. You can see he's not a crazy hinge. There's people who will come to like who will have their shoulders literally here. Like a torso almost parallel to the floor. This is far away from parallel to the floor okay so that will be his kind of movement jump strategy um it's a nice congruent jump so he executes it well um coordinated arms and everything so yeah decent jump so now um his stiffness allows for him to have a pretty fast movement time okay so Average, you see 0.9 seconds for the whole kind of movement jump. He did it in 0.77 on average in his two tests that we have. That is fast, okay? 0.77 is pretty quick. Um, the fastest guy I ever tested was like 0.6 something. Um, that guy is ultra super stiff. and He doesn't even bend his, his hips really. And like barely. And yeah. So Vladi, pretty stiff. More to the stiff side guy. Pretty fast jumper as well, which is huge for team sports. He's not a team sport player, but still, it's a nice gift to have. So if we look at his counter movement jumps, so he did two counter movement jumps. He did a third one as well, which was 43 centimeters, but I consciously made the decision to disable it because right after the jump, before I even got the result, where while my tablet was still loading, he said, oh, no, no, fuck this jump. That, that, was, that was completely off. I, I messed it up completely, and I consciously made the decision to exclude this from my data because this will be low quality data that I don't want screwing with my average values here. Okay. So I excluded it, disabled it on purpose. And now, so he had two proper jumps, 47, 49 centimeters. Okay. I gave him three trials for the, for this counter movement jump. Sometimes I do more, but for the most part it's three. Okay. So only in special occasions, I would do more now. Let's look at his best jump. So 49 centimeter jump. So the way I will look at this is first I got the jump. Okay. I know what the result is. I know how the curve looks. I know what the guy looks jumping. And then before I try to look at anything and make any conclusions, if there are any conclusions to be made at all, then I first I will look at what this guy does in comparison to other people in force wise okay so we look at his propulsive forces so he's kind of above average in the propulsive sector sec sector so his propulsive abilities are pretty good okay so push off how much he pushes off but his braking is lackluster okay so if you go to braking here um yeah braking is definitely underdeveloped needs a lot of development and we will shortly get into um, the specifics of that so um for sure this just tells me right away okay he got a deficit in breaking he needs to get better at breaking all things equal this is not good to be um below average in every breaking category here in the kind of movement jump um in most cases so for this jump, um, let's start. I always start with not always, but most of the times I start with the curve itself. So I see here his unweighing phase. This is a not so good unweighing phase. Okay, this is uh, incomplete unweighing because he has 140 newtons of force, 138, 139 uh, acting on the force weight as he is unweighing. So the unweighing phase is literally the initial downwards phase so look at this from here until here okay this is the unweighing phase 
I suppose the breaking phase will start around here. Yeah, somewhere around here. I think here the breaking phase will start. But this until here, this is unweighing, okay? So he has an uncom incomplete one, incomplete relaxation going on. So he's not able to fully relax down and take his whole body weight off the floor. Um, that is one point. The second point is it takes him a lot of time. So I noticed this before I even had the data. I noticed this in his kind of moving jumps when I was he was going through the trials. He would have some apprehension going down. He wouldn't just attack down and get out of it. He would like kind of like cautiously go down. And that is also, so this initial phase here, so I don't know why the video won't play. Anyways, um, so this initial phase going down here, this here, like he got some apprehension, like he's just not fully attacking down. And that tells me something is going on here, which it is. So his apprehension here, his kind of hesitation going down fast shows up here because he has a slow on way. Look at this. This is this takes a lot of time. The unweighing phase is really long. This is a big unweighing phase. And the problem is it is it takes him long to unweigh. And it is shallow. So it's not a full unweighing. So that is exactly the opposite of what we want. We want a complete unweighing. We want zero here, zero or one or two or three Newtons being displayed here, maybe five. Then I would still call it a complete unweighing phase. And we want this not to be like a like a V shape here. We want this to be like a U, a big, steep, deep U. Okay, so this should be steep down, and then this is zero, 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 and this should go up. Okay. Um, if I want to, if you guys want to see a complete unweighing face, I'll show you mine. So let's look at this. Boom. Okay. So here, I, I don't know what this was, but like, boom, it drops down ten. Okay. Um, if we go like further back here, if we take this. Boom. Okay. See so here, add one zero whatever okay so but this is a boom it's deep on weight completely all right so this is what would be a complete on weighing phase um, now the next thing is the breaking phase so if we look at the force curve it is a very smooth curve okay so he doesn't have any lags in here so it doesn't like boom break in and then go back up it is a smooth curve when with no hiccups and that is good that means it is a efficient jump it is a well cohesive nice congruent well sequenced jump and that reflects in the metrics so what i see here i check here if we're going to look at the peak breaking force 1878 which is right here then we look at the average breaking force over this whole red area here it's 1500 so a difference of 350 is good Okay, that means he's efficient. If this was lower, so if this was 1,878 on the peak, but the average was like 1,100, 1,200, I would tell me, hmm, there's something going on here. Why is he not able to uphold a certain level of force during the whole breaking phase? And then we would see something here. Okay, so this is, means it's, it's efficient. And what does that tell me? He needs more of this. He needs more peak. If it's efficient then there's no point in working on more efficiency you need more peak you need to raise the ceiling so that you can you can you can bring the average up to the ceiling again same shit with it here with the proportion 2000 peak right here and 1700 average propulsive force so this is good nice efficient cohesive jump all right we're gonna look at and this also reflects in the kinematics as well so this is a nice looking sequence jump. So if there was like a lag, a hiccup somewhere in the breaking phase, then there would be something funny happening right here. So something would be happening. Maybe maybe one of his heels would kind of come off because on one leg he runs out of dorsiflexion or maybe one leg doesn't pronate as well. So then the heel comes off or like he dips to the inside and then you have a force lag and then you can't break as hard. Those are, type, those are things that can influence that. Um, so 
Just not the, not just to the end. It could be anywhere. It could be like maybe it runs out of hip internal rotation and then you have the collapse at the knee and then you can put the force and then you have the dip in the force on the breaking phase. Many things that can happen, okay? So, but his shit looks really nice, cohesive. I don't see anything happening, anything funny happening here. Um, I don't have a video from the front view, which I usually take. I forgot it here because I took one from his depth jump. Um, but here also nothing funny happening. So it's a nice sequence, internal rotation, nice equal and balanced external rotation, nice expansion coming out of the amortiz amortization of depth jump. And this is a nice, no, no collapse, just clean internal rotation, clean force into the ground depth jump. And you can see the jump result is really good. Jump pretty high. Okay, boom. So um, that was just like a little tangent on on what could happen in terms of efficiency. Now we're gonna look at the other jump, the worst jump, forty-seven. So the worst jump you can see here. He got a little. This is a little force lag right here. Okay, so something happened here. Something is not as efficient here because you have this like this goes up and then it goes down, and the breaking rfd is really low here okay so this is like a really bad breaking job that he did here okay so if we are going to look uh, yeah there you go so the difference in the peak between average breaking force and peak breaking force is larger here okay less efficient breaking then you got the breaking rfd 5400 Whereas the better jump had a 7,000 breaking RFD, okay? Steeper curve, steeper RFD, more RFD, okay, this is good. Then, uh, when we look at the difference between the legs, here, the better jump, where the forces were higher, the movement time was quicker as well, I believe. So, here, his surgical leg, the left leg, had less breaking RFD, okay? So this is really typical for surgical legs, especially ACL, where the breaking RFD or even a concentric RFD is inhibited, okay? This is something that needs to be restored, especially with the, after the surgeries. And this is really typical, okay? So 700 difference in breaking RFD, we need to equal equalize that. After this test, we know, and we're gonna work on it, okay? Um, so we have that. So the breaking RFD is worse in the better jump. Okay. And how long did it take him? So that was a 0.73 second. It took him to create the jump and he jumped 49 centimeters. And in the worst jump, he jumped two centimeters less. But it also took him longer to complete that jump. Almost 0.1 to complete the jump. So it took him longer and he jumped less high, which is bad. This is really bad for team sports okay if you then check uh breaking rfd obviously 1600 newtons per second less rfd in the breaking phase and look at breaking rfd here now it was balanced okay but the fact that it was balanced in a jump where the total output was less just tells me, okay, when it's less output, when it's more sub maximal, he might be able to get by. He can, he can um, move in a balanced manner. But when the stress is higher, when the forces are higher, then one link in the chain breaks down. And it is in training. Our goal is to strengthen the weakest link. So that you don't break down under high dress like it will be here. Okay, so this is my job as a trainer to balance this out now. Okay, so that was the breaking phase. Um, in terms of propulsive phase, I don't think there is too much here to be said here. So yeah, 1,700, 2,000 peak. I need more peak and I just need to up that output for him. Um, so we're going to work on that. Um, propulsive power 2.8 to 5.4 this is a pretty pretty um, standard ratio okay so if he was terrible at it this average propulsive power would be even lower 
and we just need to raise this and this is probably going to raise with it if we're going to look at breaking power um yeah so he needs he definitely needs more breaking power i i know p i've seen numbers of like people putting up here around this is so this is minus 1.7 k watts if we look at uh myself so if we're gonna go down here let's take like a 56 centimeter jump look uh breaking power so i'm a different guy peak 2.5 okay so there is work to be done right 2.5 and this was 1.7 yeah okay so that is it for for vladi um we are going to so what is does what does all this tell me okay so this all this tells me this guy needs to get better at relaxing this guy needs to get better at braking we need to equalize the braking power and the braking rfd that he got on both legs this is very important for him especially health wise especially as a downhill skier you need to absorb force so you need to get better at that because you can't be in the lower average uh, uh, below average in in eccentric qualities in the uh kind of open jump if you're if your whole sport relies on braking okay because they will be he's skiing downhill with 100 kilometers per hour and just like making big jumps and then land and then to keep on going to keep on going fast you need to be able to absorb that so braking is going to be a huge part of our training moving forward um equalize both legs heels better on the left especially load the knee better and just keep on developing strength this guy is far from done with his strength work um keep on developing strength keep on developing that power keep on developing plyometric ability and to make more um training conclusions i would have to look at the other stuff but this is alone just what the counter movement jump just told me so if you like this type of stuff uh then let me know in the comments i know nobody on in the world does this type of shit um, but I don't give a fuck. I'm going to just hand out all the gems. I don't have anything to lose. I don't think this will hurt me. Um, if you learned something from this, then great. Um, if you made it until here, then drop a spiral emoji in the comments. And right now, if you're seeing this, my Black Friday sale is live for all my courses and my training programs. The link is in the bio. So the late knee extension course my training system course so you can learn about my whole training system use um, codes black friday or black friday 30 just put it in all in the in the description and for training programs also sizeandtraining.com just use code black friday code goes until monday december 2nd and if you fuck with this then drop the spiral in the comments let me know if you want more of this and tap into my courses to support me and yeah, see you guys.